Good morning. Well, I have been very open sharing my personal adventure through the healthcare system in my own town, my personal journey trying to fight um, an overcoated bill. And uh, I wanted, I felt that I should share with you its conclusion. My last piece of business was to write a review on the website of the family practice, Salivanti and Cotter in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, detailing what I felt was bad medical practice, period. My husband scheduled an annual exam. If you saw my previous shows, um, the doctor coded it as a general illness exam from the get-go without ever even speaking to my husband. <clears throat> and then when questioned about it, <clears throat> when I fought the bill, the coding, they stood their ground. And that's not the way it used to work. It used to be that when you questioned coding on a bill, the doctors usually just change the code. It's not hard to do. But now things have changed, and things have changed, as I have said throughout this series. I'm trying to educate all of you so that you know how to protect yourselves from this same situation happening. That what changed between 2015 and 2018 was that a corporation bought out this family practice. Most of your family practices now are not your good old-fashioned docs that you've been going to all your life. They are corporate-owned. And the corporate puppet masters are pulling the strings. And they are dictating the kind of care, the length of time a doctor can spend with you, and what you're allowed to discuss with your own doctor. And still have it coded under the annual preventive physical. What I wrote in the review was basically what I told all of you. I wrote what happened. My husband scheduled an annual checkup with blood work and the doctor coded it as general illness and not preventive checkup. And what I got in response was not only maddening, it was insulting to me and to my husband. Basically, what whoever responded to this, and the funny thing is, I got a response on my negative review on their webpage. I got a, re a response quicker than I got a phone call back when I was calling the doctor's office to discuss this billing issue. It took two weeks to get a call back from them. It took 24 hours to get them to respond to my negative review. And what they basically said, it's on my Facebook page, if you'd like to look at it. It's on my timeline, Paula Kling Luciano. I copied and pasted it. And underneath that, I copied and pasted another former patient's review who basically had the same experience with the same family practice. And what they wrote was, we did go back over the coding for Mr. Luciano's visit. And we determined that the coding was done appropriately. And if you have any problem paying this bill, you can go to upmcpinnaclecharity.org. Yeah, I was speechless. These assholes actually assumed, just like they assumed that my husband was getting a physical exam because he was sick, they assumed that I was fighting the $53.80 bill because I was going to starve if I had to pay it. That I couldn't pay the bill. We were too poor to pay it. No, you know what? We already paid the bill. When I sent the appeal, we had already paid the bill because we know that you also, from the reviews we've read on your practice, we know that you send people to collections real quick, like for 20 bucks. So we paid our bill. We always pay our bills. I did not fight this bill because we couldn't afford to pay it. I fought this bill because my husband did not get the kind of an office exam that Dr. Cotter billed my insurance for. My husband went in. He got his blood pressure taken, his temperature taken, his height and weight taken, his, his breathe, cough, ah, 
Here's a prescription. Your A1C is high. See you in three months. That's what my husband got. Dr. Cotter billed for this big educational visit. No, I'm sorry. He billed the insurance company and he lied about it when the insurance company questioned him after I filed the appeal. He lied. The nurse, Karen Meck, lied when she wrote to the insurance company. Jason had this big educational visit. I'm sorry. If you're going to be diagnosed with a chronic illness, I think it takes more than 15 minutes with the doctor to explain it all to you and educate you about it. Don't you? I know my husband was in the office 15 minutes. I know this for a fact because he called me when he left. And I know what time he went in. And I, I put all that in the appeal and they still sided with the big UPMC Pinnacle Corporation. And once again, maybe that's what the corporations do. Maybe now that these doctor's offices and hospitals are owned by corporations, now it's harder to have us, you know, the people who actually suffer because they do bad medical practices, the people who are getting less quality of care, less time with our doctors, maybe that's what these corporations do. They fight and they win and we lose. Maybe that's what it's all about. But you're damn right I'm pissed. I actually wanted to send this practice to the Pennsylvania Department of Health. I wanted to put a complaint because it's not just me this happened to. They do it to most of their patients. Most of their patients are complaining about this. It's on their website. My husband said, let it go. You have wasted enough time dealing with these people. I no longer go to this doctor. In fact, we are no longer ever going to deal with anybody or anything that has UPMC Pinnacle next to its name. We used to think LGH was a monopoly in this town. Well, UPMC Pinnacle, never going to happen again. I'm having it tattooed on my arm. In an emergency, no UPMC. I don't care if I'm two feet away from a UPMC Pinnacle doctor or hospital. I'm not going there. I got to tell you, I'm pissed. I am. I'm very angry. I'm insulted that they thought that I fought the $53 bill because I was too poor to pay it. No, I'm sorry. I never claimed poverty. I claimed that it was a just wrong billing. And I think you all should learn from my experience and from others' experience. Like I said, I'm not the only person that has been writing bad reviews on this doctor's office page since they got bought out by a corporation. People who have been with them since they were children are no longer with them. They're leaving. My husband has a new doctor. But I hope that this series has taught you one thing. That doctors are acting like businessmen. And this is interesting because I just posted something on my Facebook page last week. And it's from a um, Arthur Kaplan, Ph.D. He's at NY. You medical school and he says he doesn't like it and I've done it I say we're consumers he said no patients are not consumers because when you call a patient a consumer when you're talking about health care a consumer is someone who has a choice at the end of this answer to my review thank you for choosing UPMC Pinnacle we didn't choose UPMC Pinnacle we didn't choose them my husband wanted a family doctor three years ago, and they were in our network, and so they had good reviews at the time, and he picked them. But we didn't have a choice. Most of you out there don't even have a choice of what health insurance company you have. Your employer chooses that for you. I've already done shows about the employers who say, no birth control on our health insurance, you don't have a choice, meaning you're not a consumer. If I want to buy a new sofa, as a consumer, okay, I can go to every furniture store and Google it and find the best sofa for the best price and has the best reviews and I get to choose my sofa. can't do that. 
I can't do it with health insurance. Whatever health insurance my husband's business, his company gives us, that's our insurance company. And whatever doctors are in that network, whatever hospitals are in that network, those are the, the places we have to go for medical care. We don't have the choice that a consumer should have. So no, whenever I had said before that we are consumers, we're not. We're not because truly a customer and a consumer can choose to no longer go, come here. We can choose to say, well, you charge too much for 15 minutes. We're going to go someplace that charges less. But see, we can't do that unless they're in the network. Talked about this a lot. And this doctor, this Kaplan, he's really cool because he does say the problem is Doctors should not be considered providers. They should be considered health care givers. Givers. They're supposed to be giving us health care. Instead of worrying about the cha-ching and the money and the corporate bigwigs sitting over their shoulders going, you're spending too much time with this patient. You have to charge them for it or get them out the office. You don't have time to listen to their aches and pains and their problems. But that's what doctors are supposed to do. Why would you waste your time going for an annual Affordable Care Act covered 100% by your insurance annual exam if the only thing you're allowed to do is get your height, your weight, your blood pressure checked, and your cholesterol checked? If that's the only thing you're allowed to do, if you're not allowed to open your mouth, and say, well, you know, I, this mole seems to be growing a little bit. Should I get that checked? Or, you know, I have a scratchy throat or I get acid reef. You're not allowed to say that anymore. So my point is, this is why I don't go for an annual exam. Because if I can't talk to my doctor, because I'm going to be billed for every second past the blood pressure, say, ah, listen to my chest, height, weight. If I'm being billed extra for every second I go past that, it's a waste of my damn time. If the Affordable Care Act was what it really was supposed to be, everyone gets to go for the annual physical. And you know what? I did it. I went for my annual pap smear. Hadn't been to this doctor, this OBGYN, for eight years. I had been going to another doctor, and I decided to go off birth control. I wanted to go to this, this doctor again, an OBGYN. I got my pap smear. During the pap smear, he said, you have a yeast infection. I'm like, oh, okay. He gave me a prescription. I get a bill a week later for $250, the entire exam. I'm like, no, no, no. I made one phone call, not to a corporate, not UPMC Pinnacle billing, how can we help you? I got the actual doctor, OBGYN Associates of Lancaster. May I please have someone in billing? Please hold. Boom. I got billed for this. It was an annual physical. Yes, there was a yeast infection discovered, but I came in for the annual physical. So sorry, we'll fix the code. They fixed the code. End of story. I paid nothing. Yada, yada, yada. It was that easy. That was before UPMC Pinnacle who actually now owns that OBGYN practice, which means I can never go back there either. Because I'm not dealing with UPMC Pinnacle anymore. It was that simple. The bottom line is that when you go in for your annual physical, and I would love for a doctor or an insurance person to please explain this to me. Your annual physical should not just be covered 100% with no deductible and no copay if you pass with flying colors because that's a waste of your time. How many times have I told you I get sick and tired of wasting my time sitting in a waiting room, having someone stick their hands up my vagina and tell me everything's fine. Whether I pay for it or not, I still wasted my time. That's time I can't get back. But if the whole purpose of encouraging people to go for annual checkups is because many illnesses, many serious illnesses have no symptoms. That's what the annual checkup is supposed to find out. If you have diabetes, if you have 
serious acid reflux, if you need further testing, which yes, you're going to need to pay for, but that doesn't change the annual checkup. It should still be the annual checkup, even if you end up being diagnosed with something that needs looking into further or needs a prescription. Just because a doctor writes you a prescription doesn't turn this into an ill visit because when you went for the checkup, you didn't know you were ill. That's why they call it preventive. It's supposed to prevent you from dying. It's supposed to catch things early. But sadly, from now on, again, I don't have a family doctor. I don't do the physicals. I don't do the pap smears anymore. I don't do mammograms. I don't do any of that shit. That's going to be a pajama chronicle show in the future. I don't do any of that shit. I'll explain to you why. But again, wasting my time. But my husband is the breadwinner of this family. And I want him to get annual checkups. I want him to keep up with his good health. But from now on, and I hope you learned this from my series of shows, before when he schedules his next annual physical, I'm going to give him a list of questions to ask. I am scheduling, first of all, I want this on, on a recording or I want it in writing. Annual physical. This is what we're going to code this physical as. Blood work. This is how we're coding the blood work. I want to know all of that before they stick a needle in his arm or he walks into an exam room. I want the codes in advance. I plan to call the insurance company and give them the codes, the date of the exam, and then if the doctor starts fucking around with the codes or the lab starts messing around with the codes, I can call the insurance company and back and say, guess what? We had the codes. They changed it after the fact. That's no bueno. That's no cool. And then I will have a real chance of fighting it and winning. But I'm going to make sure that from now on that my husband never walks into another doctor's office blind. That we never... Go to any medical provider, oh, medical health care giver. Thank you, Dr. Kaplan. Without knowing in advance what they think they are actually seeing us for. At the best case scenario, Dr. Cotter misunderstood the reason for my husband coming into the office on December 18th and getting his annual physical. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is, and according to other patients or former patients of Salivanti Cotter in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, well, it seems anytime you ask a question or veer off what the doctor thinks is part of an annual exam, well, that meter just goes to ching, to ching, to ching, to ching. It's all about the money. You go past 15 minutes with the doctor and you start getting billed for it. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. But now, at least, I feel good that while I have shared some very personal information with you guys, I am happy to report my husband's doing great. He's great. His A1C is normal. Normal. If any of you had his A1C, you would, you'd be fine. And he's seeing a chiropractor now who is much cheaper and doesn't overbill and doesn't worry about money, just worries about taking care of patients <clears throat> for a minor issue with his back. So that's it. It's a shame the family doctor wouldn't have just said, hey, you might have an issue with your back. Why don't you go to a chiropractor instead of the stuff that we actually had to go through? Anyway, family doctors, actually, by the way, medical doctors rarely recommend a chiropractor. So if you're having unexplained pains in your legs, your arms, your back, your neck, Chiropractors are awesome. Go to a chiropractor. I highly recommend them. They don't overcharge you, and they actually give a shit. They care about you. And they're not going to worry about what insurance you have or what network you're in. And if you have AFLAC, AFLAC will cover part of chiropractic stuff. So there you go. Yeah, think outside the box, even if your family doctor won't. 
And remember this. Know before you go. And if you have one of these doctors that is going to overbill you, then sadly, if you want that annual exam, get it. Just keep your mouth shut. Don't ask the doctor how his family's doing. It's going to add time to the visit. And don't mention any issues you're having because it's going to cost you. Oh, look at this little lump. Oh, yeah, that's nothing. Two weeks later, you get a bill for $53. What's going to happen? Who knows? I think we need to change the way healthcare works in America. I think we should be able to choose the doctors. I mentioned this on Tuesday. We shouldn't have a network. All insurance companies should cover every hospital and every practice, every anesthesiologist, every surgeon in, our, in America. Your insurance should follow you. If you go to Europe, your insurance should follow you there. These networks are killing people, literally. And even though we're still paying the bills, we can no longer call ourselves consumers because consumers have choices. With healthcare, patients have none. Political Paula, out.